lecture 37 jacobians part 3 so in the continuation of the previous lecture if uh, the next property if the given function u1 u2 un we have un n functions having n independent variable such that u1 is a function of x1 and u2 is a function of x1 x2 u3 is a function of x1 x2 x3 and the un function un is a function of x1 x2 x3 and up to n means u1 is a function of we having only one independent variable x1 u2 having two independent variable x1 x2 u3 having three independent variable x1 x2 x3 and so on then the jacobian of u1 u2 u3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 and xn we write del the partial derivative of u1 with respect to x1 the partial derivative of u2 with respect to x2 and into the partial derivative of u3 with respect to x3 and so on so you can easily prove that property if you just taking the three <coughs> functions suppose we have a three function u1 u2 u3 then the jacobian of if you want to write the jacobian of u1 u2 u3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 so you write the determinant u1 with respect to x1 u1 with respect to x2 u1 with respect to x3 and similarly u2 with respect to x1 u2 with respect to x2 partial derivative of u2 with respect to x3 and similarly we write for u3 with respect to x1 u3 with respect to x2 and u3 with respect to x3 now you see if we take the partial derivative of u1 with respect to x1 so we get the value that is u1 with respect to x1 but when you take the partial derivative of u1 with respect to x2 we get 0 similarly that term is also 0 and the partial derivative of u, u2 with respect to x1 with respect to x1 u2 with respect to x2 we obtain the values but u2 with respect to x3 we get 0 and similarly the last three terms we get a value u3 with respect to x2 u3 with respect to x3 now if you simplify these uh, if you expand that determinant what the value you obtain is just multiplication of the diagonal elements so we get that term so easily you can prove for the n and a term so you remember the property if u1 u2 u3 are a functions in such a way so you can write the jacobian directly by that property so look, we take an example if suppose we have given y1 is equal to cos a cos x1 y2 is a function sine x1 x2 y3 is a function sine x1 x2 sine x2 and cos x3 so here we have to find the jacobian of y1 y2 y3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 now you see there in that example y1 is a function of x1 y2 is a function of x1 x2 and y3 is a function of x1 x2 x3 that is cos x1 this is sin x1 cos x2 that is sin x1 sin x2 and cos x3 right so now if we want to validate the partial derivative of y1 y2 y3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 or we can say the jacobian of y1 y2 y3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 so we just write do you don't write the matrix we just write by the help of the property what we get we write the partial derivative of y1 with respect to x1 into partial derivative of y2 with respect to x2 partial derivative of y3 with respect to x3 now what is a partial derivative of y1 with respect to x1 we get minus sine x1 
and y2 with respect to x2 we get minus sine x1 sine x2 and y3 with respect to x3 so these two terms are taking the constant so we get minus sine x1 sine x2 sine x3 after simplify we get three negative signs so we write minus sine x1 sine x1 and sine x1 so we get sine x1 cube into sine x2 square into sine x3 so this is the value of that term so by using the property we can directly evaluate the Jacobian of y1 y2 y3 with respect to x1 x2 x3 now Jacobian of implicit functions so suppose if we have two variable u1 u2 is a implicit implicit function of x1 x2 and we can say u1 u2 x1 x2 be connected by some implicit relation of the form that is f1 and f2 then the Jacobian of u1 u2 with respect to x1 x2 is equal to minus 1 raised to power 2 the Jacobian of f1 f2 with respect to x1 x2 divided by Jacobian of f1 f2 with respect to u1 u2 so this formula or we can say this is expand for the n variable also so suppose we have u1 u2 and un implicit functions of x1 x2 xn variables and the implicit and connected by some implicit relation of the functions f1 f2 fn functions then in that case the jacobian of u1 u2 un with respect to x1 x2 xn we write minus 1 raised to power n because we have n functions then into what the uh, Jacobian or we can say the partial derivative of f1 f2 fn function with respect to x1 divide by the Jacobian of f1 f2 fn with respect to u1 u2 un so by the help of that relation we can easily find the Jacobian of implicit functions we take an example here if x square plus y square plus u square minus v square is equal to 0 and uv plus xy is equal to 0 then we have to prove the Jacobian of uv with respect to xy is x square minus y square divided by u square plus v square so here you see that it is difficult to separate the function u with respect uh, in the form of xy or xy in the form of uv so these are these two relations are what they are implicit so we can say here because we have to find the jacobian of uv with respect to xy so we can say here here the variable you can say uv is sorry are implicit function of xy and related to the following function so we write what the first function here we have given the function that is uh, we can say f1 is equal to x square plus y square plus u square minus v square is equal to 0 and we take the second function f2 that is uv plus xy is equal to 0 now we have to find the jacobian of uv with respect to xy or the partial derivative of uv with respect to xy so by the property of implicit we write we have two functions uv so we write minus 1 is to power 2 the partial derivative of f1 f2 with respect to xy divided by the partial derivative of f1 f2 with respect to uv so we evaluate 
the partial derivative of f1 f2 with respect to xy and f1 f2 with respect to uv so now we evaluate the partial derivative of f1 f2 with respect to xy so how we write determinant f1 with respect to x f1 with respect to y f2 with respect to x and f2 with respect to y that is sorry that is y so we evaluate so the partial derivative of f1 with respect to x we get 2x the partial derivative of f1 with respect to y we get 2y and f2 with respect to x we get x and with respect to y and expanding the determinant we get 2x square minus y square and in similar way we can evaluate f1 f2 with respect to uv so similar similarly the partial derivative of f1 with respect to u f1 with respect to v f2 with respect to u f2 with respect to v so what we get we get the partial derivative of f1 with respect to u we get 2u and minus 2p v and u on expand that we get 2 u square plus v square now we substitute these two in that formula so what we get minus 1 this to power 2 is positive 1 so we get 2 x square minus y square upon 2 u square plus v square we cancel that so we obtain the value of this is x square minus y square u square plus v square and proved let's take an example we take one more example here if we have given functions u cube plus v cube plus w cube is equal to x plus y plus z and u square plus v square plus w square is equal to x cube plus y cube plus z cube and u plus v plus w is equal to x square plus y square plus z square then we have to find the Jacobian of u v w with respect to x y z that is the partial derivative of u v w with respect to x y z is that one so here you see these three relations are given they are u v w are implicit functions of x y z so here first we defined the <coughs> three functions we can say f is we can write u cube plus v cube plus w cube minus x minus y minus z another function function we take u square plus v square plus w square we just take this term on left hand side so we write x cube minus y cube minus z cube this is equal to 0 this is equal to 0 and another function third function that is h u plus v plus w minus x square minus y square minus z square is equal to 0 so here u v w is a implicit function and is connected by the implicit relation f g h so then by the implicit theorem u v w the partial derivative of u v w with respect to x y z is what minus 1 is to power 3 we have three functions and the partial derivative of f g h function with respect to x y z divided by the partial derivative of f g h with respect to u v w now we evaluate these two and substitute in the formula now we take del f 
g h with respect to x y z is del f is f partial derivative of f with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z the partial derivative of g with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z and partial derivative of function h with respect to x with respect to y with respect to z now we just take the partial derivatives here so the partial derivative of f with respect to x we get minus 1 with respect to y we get minus 1 minus 1 minus 3x square <coughs> with this, the partial derivative of g with respect to x 3y square minus 3 z square and similarly minus 2x 2y 2z minus so now you just simplify that determinant if you take the minus sign so we write in each row so we write minus 1 q <coughs> in the second row we can take 3 as a common and in third row we take 2 as a common so the determinant is 1 1 1 x square y square z square x y z now you apply the operation so here we get minus 6 we apply the operation on c2 c2 minus c1 and similar time we can apply the operation on c column third that is 3 3 minus c1 so we get 1 x square x 0 that is y square minus x square and y minus y minus x 0 z square minus x square z minus x now you just after simplify this minus 6 <coughs> now the determinant become reduced to that part 1 into this y square minus x square y minus x z square minus x square z minus x now <coughs> minus 6 you take y if y minus x is a common in the first column and z minus x in the second column so the terminant is y plus x a square plus b square you apply the formula here z plus x 1 1 so on simplify minus 6 y minus x z minus x and this become y plus x minus z minus x so we write y minus z so if you write x minus y so we can write 6 x minus y z minus x y minus z here and this is what this is the Jacobian on the partial derivative of f g h with respect to x y z and the similar way you can find the partial derivative of f g h with respect to u v w which is we get 6 minus 6 u minus v w minus u and v minus w now these two substitute in that formula in that formula so we get minus 1 6 x minus y z minus x y minus z and that is minus 6 u minus v w minus u and v minus w we cancel and this is the required proof y minus z u minus v w minus u and v minus w so in that way by the help of the property of the implicit we can easily prove or show thanks